Hello everyone, I'm Sean Peter 43 once again, bringing you all round three of the OU tournament hosted by my buddy Jodor. Um, so this is the part where things get kind of like difficult in all honesty, because I already won two battles straight in a row, so this is going to be my third battle. And one of the things that I, I'll admit right now is one of the things I'm not really good at when it comes to battling is consistency. So the fact that I won already two battles in a row really, really makes me feel like the, the chances of me being able to win the next battle are reduced. Because I kind of go by this whole matters of probability scenario where the more I do something, the, the less chances I have to um, keep it going basically. Which I don't know. I don't even know if that's even true in general, in all honesty. But if it is, well, then there you have it. But uh, yeah, so this is where things get kind of complicated because my next opponent for this battle is actually going to be um, these coconuts. Which, I'm not gonna lie, in my honest opinion, that name sounds really, really corny. But whatever. So um, yeah, uh, this guy is someone I actually am familiar with. I actually um, have battled him quite a number of times in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. But um, you, you probably don't even know that because honestly I haven't really showcased a battle with him in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. A lot of the battles I had with him back in the day were not really that good. I think we even did battle a few times in Sun and Moon as well. But he actually he actually was a lot better that back then because he, he kicked my ass like three damn times in a row. Which is, I guess, I don't know. For me at least, it's very telling. Because I usually, because when I beat him a lot in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, I was thinking, eh, this guy probably doesn't even know what's up. But in Sun and Moon, he kind of just like proved me otherwise. Either that or he just got better, in all honesty. And not to mention, even today, this guy has been taking a lot of names, in all honesty. I don't know if you guys even know this. Um, maybe the ones who follow the snacking know this, but he has beaten the snack in a battle before. And he has beaten my buddy Jodor quite a number of times too. Joe even says um, that this guy is one of the people that gives him a hard time to get a win out of basically. So the fact that now I'm facing him is kind of, not going to lie, it's a little bit scary. Because I think the last time I faced this guy was when I um, got like a, a Sharpedo sweep. Which by the way I did not showcase on this channel because uh, for one thing it was one-sided. I probably would have showcased it even if it wasn't, or even if it was in all honesty. But the thing is that that battle took place when there was patches, so yeah. But um, here we are again, and this is going to be once again another battle. This guy is a lot more weirder now, in, in all honesty. First of all, because his name is freaking D's Coconuts. Back then, he was just known as Coconuts, so now he's known as D's Coconuts. And, and he's also doing the weird stuff that I do, so that's also kind of like, huh. That's, yeah, but um, anyways, all that aside, yeah, this is going to be the battle. I think I talked too much about other things, which is kind of like, I don't know, but um, yeah, it's I just wanted to let you guys know who um, who Coconuts was. Like, I, I'm familiar with this guy. I've battled him before. This is like the first time in a long time that we're battling, so, and he has gotten a little bit better since the since then, Um, so I'm actually a little nervous for this battle, in all honesty, but uh, yeah, I don't know if it's me or is this guy also copying my style, too? Because he has the freaking glasses and the freaking black purse. I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm just seeing things. Maybe I'm overthinking a little bit. Or, yeah, maybe it's all in my head. I don't know. But anyways, all that aside, I'm going to lead off with Pelipper. He led with, with Hoop on Bound, which is actually a Pokemon I've never seen in quite a while, actually. In a battle, at least. So, this is actually kind of interesting. I did not know what to expect from them. I know they like to carry Dark Pulse and Psychic. So... I kind of just stayed in going for the U-turn thing and I can maybe just do a lot of damage and maybe take a hit. But the damn thing had Thunderbolt, so I was like, oh. And it takes out my Pelipper. So now I send in Swampert right away because since I lost um, Pelipper, now I have to actually um, take advantage of Swampert in the rain for as much as I can. Even if this guy has this Landers T, which manages to get an Intimidate off on me. So I send in Swampert, Mega Evolve, and I'm just going to go for an Aqua Tail just to hit the Hill Pond Bound very hard. But as you can see, he sends in Landers T gets an intimidate off and because of it it survives this aqua tail which really sucks and also tells me that it's maybe a defensive lander's teeth given how i took rocky helmet damage from it so now i'm just gonna go for an ice punch just to um not miss aqua tail but he ends up switching into ferrothorn which is actually kind of interesting because yeah this thing is gonna hit me with iron bars as well so he's trying to chip down my swamper which is actually a little annoying so because of that i'm definitely gonna switch out and um i'm gonna go straight into kartana here Hoping he goes for Leech Seed or even Garble, but instead what he's going to do is actually going to pull a double here, or at least switch out I think. Yeah, yeah, he's going to double actually. And he's going to go into Mawile, get an, another Intimidate off on my Kartana this time. 
And because I'm sick of all the intimidating, I'm just gonna go straight for the Swords Dance right here. Um, I stayed in, which was risky because he could have gone maybe for like a um, Fire Fang if he carries it. I know I'm in the rain, but I mean, I don't know. Fire Fang can still do a lot coming from Omega Mawile. Especially if this guy also decides to stay in and go for the Swords Dance. Because, yeah, that's kind of a problem in all honesty. Because he went for Swords Dance as well. What I wanted to do right here with this Carton after going for my own Swords Dance was set up a substitute. And the reason for this was because I was kind of anticipating the Sucker Punch. And I wasn't sure if, if at plus two would I be able to survive one. So I kind of just went for the substitute hoping he goes for it. And I was like, oh. Because he went for the Fire Fang instead. So what I decided to do here is go for another substitute because I was thinking, okay, maybe now he'll go for Sucker Punch. But he just keeps going for Fire Fang. So after this, I was thinking, you know what, yo, if he um, predicts me here and goes for Sucker Punch now, well then rip me. But what I'm going to do right now is straight up pop out this Z-move right now, this all-out pummeling. I'm at plus one, so I'm just kind of hoping I get at least enough damage to um, at least cripple this thing. And I'd be able to revenge KO it with something else. Because if I don't KO this thing as soon as possible with this plus two, I, I think I am kind of screwed in all honesty. So yeah. I'm just hoping to get as much damage on this thing as possible so that I can revenge KO it with something that's kind of healthy right now. But surprisingly, as you can see right here, this Z move actually ends up KOing the Mega Mawile, which is actually really, really telling because Mega Mawiles typically carry a lot more um, physical defense than, uh, than its regular form. So the fact that it didn't survive a non stab um, all out pummeling, even though it was a plus one, it's still kind of telling, in my opinion. So yeah, now he's gonna go into Kartana now because he sent it in against my Kartana. I don't think he's risking the speed tie. I think what he's trying to do is outspeed me and go for Sacred Sword because I think this um this um Sacred Sword is actually tr um Sacred Sword. This Kartana is actually Choice Scarfed. So I decided to hard switch into Tapalele, which is risky. This is actually unfortunately one of those 50-50 scenarios that I actually have to um manage to get right because if I predict wrong, then that's kind of where the problems start. So after I send out Tapalele and he went for Sacred Sword, him switching out instantly confirms to me that it's either choice scarfed or choice banned. I think it's scarfed in all honesty. So I just decided to go for Moonblast to do as much damage on any switch in as possible and thankfully enough he decides to sack his own Hoopa Unbound. Um, I'm guessing he was predicting me to go for HP Fire thinking that I'd probably predict him to go for the Ferrothorn but I was like nah let's just get some chip on anything he sends in. And he sends out Hoopa which goes down to the Moonblast from Tavo Lele thankfully. So after sending out this um, Ferrothorn now I just hard switch into Kartana predicting a Garble or Leech Seed. And he does go for the Gyro Ball. It doesn't KO my Kartana and it doesn't look like another one will. So what I decide to do here now is stay in and go for a Swords Dance. And what he's, uh, what Togo Dance is going to do now is go for a uh, switch into Landers T. Getting another Intimidate off. But because I went for Swords Dance, I'm not really too afraid of that Intimidate now. Because I, I at least have plus one in the attack. So what I'm going to do right here is just go for Leaf Blade. Take out this Landers T. I was kind of uh, afraid that this thing would be Scarfed. But thankfully it wasn't because my Kartana was able to outspeed it. And my Kartana is not Scarfed if it wasn't obvious already. And because I KO this thing, I do get plus one. But he can easily just send out Tapu Koko and outspeed me and just go for a Thunderbolt or a U-turn depending on what he wants to do. So, yeah. He's going to go into Tapu Koko now, um, as you can see. My Kartana is weakened, so I kind of didn't think I'd need it anyway. So I decided to just stay in and see what he wants to go for. He ends up going for U-turn, which is kind of good for me because now I get to see what he wants to send in. And just send out a Pokemon according to what he sends out. So, yeah. And what he's going to send out right here is the Kartana once again. And this kind of led me to um, want to um, send in the um, Tapu Lele. Just to get the Psychic Terrain up. So that on the off chance that I do lose my Ferrothorn. I can just send out Halucha right away. And take it, um, the Kartana out. So after sending in Tapu Lele right here. What I'm going to do now is send in Ferrothorn. This was risky once again. Because he could have easily just predicted me and gone for Sacred Sword. Like did he really think I'd go for the... Um, Hidden Power Fire, knowing that this thing was Scarfed. Maybe he didn't know that I knew that it was Scarfed, or at least I kind of figured it was Scarfed. I didn't, I wasn't sure it was Scarfed. I was hoping it wasn't Scarfed, but I did switch into Ferrothorn nonetheless, just hoping it would be Scarfed and that he'd lock himself into a move that's resisted by um, Ferrothorn, such as Leaf Blade or um, Smart Strike. So yeah, he does go for Smart Strikes, thankfully, which does force him to switch out. Here I decided to switch into Swampert, um, hoping to take advantage of taking out the, um, the Kartana. But um, yeah, we ended up both just doubling. He doubled into Ferrothorn and I just doubled into Swampert. And now, because we're both here, I'm just going to go straight for the Superpower. I wasn't sure the Superpower would KO in all honesty. But what I wanted to do on this Ferrothorn was just get as much chip as possible. 
because uh, if he does go for Leech Seed, it's not going to be a big deal to Swampert if I can actually at least get some damage off on it first. So, yeah. Thankfully, he does not go for Leech Seed, though. He ends up going just for the Power Whip, taking out my Swampert, which is unfortunate. But again, the Rain is no longer here because Pelipper is gone, so I kind of didn't think this thing would be any more useful other than to just get the Super Power off on the Ferrothorn. So, what I'm going to do here now that I lost Swampert is just send out Tapu Lele again, go for Hidden Power Fire. He's going to protect just a Scout, what I'm going to lock myself into. And I am, in fact, going for the Hidden Power Fire. Um, even if he switches out, his only switch into this Hidden Power Fire at this point is his Tapu Koko in all honesty. And I'm honestly fine with just going for the Hidden Power Fire on Tapu Koko as well. Because what I want on this Tapu Koko right now is some damage. Because I want my Halucha to be able to late game sweep. And I am not going to be able to if this Tapu Koko is still relatively healthy. So what I want to do right now is just go for the Hidden Power Fire. Regardless if he switches it or not. That way I can just um, do a lot of damage. And as you can see, a Specs Hidden Power Fire from the Tapu Lele did over half to this Tapu Koko, which is really, really nice. Because now I can just hard switch in the Ferrothorn, hoping he goes for Thunderbolt. He does go for Thunderbolt. And now I can just, um, I can knock off Leech Seed. I can really do whatever I want right here, because I'm basically in a very, very good position. He's the one that's going to be forced to switch out, unless he wants to... Um, just continue to attack my Ferrothorn, which is not going to really do much. So instead of U-turning here, he's going to go straight for the um, Heart Switch into Ferrothorn. He doesn't want to get chipped down by the um, the Iron Barbs. And what I'm going to do right here is go straight for the Stealth Rocks because I know he's going to want to switch out a lot according to what I try to do. So um, it's better to get these off just to punish any of his switching. So here, uh, I'm just going to go for the Knockoff. He ends up going for the Leech Seed, so which is fine with me in all honesty because I really don't do much to this thing. So yeah, getting the knockoff is nice because now I don't have to worry about this thing getting more passive recovery. Because one of the annoying things about freaking Ferrothorns is that they always get a lot of their recovery back because they carry Protect, which allows them to stall turns so they can get more left orders recovery. And if they have Leech Seed off already, then they can just get even more recovery. Like these things, while not having reliable recovery, do manage to recover quite a lot just due to these tactics and all this with protecting and leech seeding and carrying leftovers and all that it's crazy but uh yeah so here i decided to make a risky play and just hard switch into tapu lele just because i wanted to see if he'd probably go for a leech seed again seeing how he went for it when i went for knockoff so but he ends up actually making the hard switch into tapu coco which kind of sucks because if i had just went for another power whip i would have probably taken out the tapu coco in all honesty but because of this now i'm forced to switch back into ferrothorn He's going to stay in and just go for the Thunderbolt. I'm glad I did not stay in because I was actually very, very close to wanting to stay in in all honesty just because I was thinking he'll probably try to switch out again. But no, he actually stayed in and went for Thunderbolt. Got a crit on my Ferrothorn, but thankfully it's still not enough to take out my Ferrothorn other than to just maybe chip me down for the Kartana. So um, yeah, here what I'm going to do now is just go for Power Whip. I did not want to go for Knockoff here because if he sends in Kartana and loses the Choice Scarf, that thing will be able, will be free to send out um, or switch up his moves and easily take out what's left on my team because he can just Sacred Sword this thing, Tapu Lele spec so he won't outspeed, so he can just change up his move and go for Smart Strike, and I did not want that. So yeah, here I go for Leech Seed because I was kind of hoping he'd switch out, but he doesn't. He ends up trying to go for Leech Seed himself, I, hoping I, I guess hoping I'd switch out, but I don't. So here what I'm going to do now is go for um, a Power Whip because again, I just do not want him to send out Kartana and have me knock off its Choice Scarf. So here he's going to go into Kartana finally realizing that there's really nothing that's going to happen here other than me getting more HP recovery via the leftovers because I still have them thankfully so here he's going to finally switch into Cartana like I said and um, here I here what I do in, um, what I decide to do is just switch in Tapu Lele even if he predicts me and goes for Smart Strike and takes out my Tapu Lele uh, what I wanted to do at this point was just um, get the Psychic Train up so that I can send out Halucha which is carrying a Psychic Seed to kick in and then um activate on burden from halucha basically so as you can see he is going to predict my switch and go for the march strike i could have stayed in and just maybe keep power whipping but that would have probably been a waste of time so i decided to just switch in tapu lele either way i am going to send out halucha which is going to activate the um unburden with this psychic seed and is raising my spadef as well which for whatever it's worth because all his left his only special attacker is tempo coco which if it hits me with thunderbolt it's not really gonna it's actually gonna take me out regardless so but yeah, here I am going to be able to outspeed this Scarf Kartana because Halucha's um, speed is doubled as opposed to just semi-doubled or yeah, like semi-boosted with the um, Choice Scarf or whatever. And I am going to be able to take it out. So um, now he's going to send out Tapu Koko, which thanks to the rocks and the fact that um, I hit it with a Hidden Power of Fire with Tapu Lele, now it's in range for me to just safely go for the Resisted Acrobatics 
because if I went for another high jump kick, there was a chance I could miss, in all honesty. And I did not want that, so here he's gonna send out his last Pokemon, which is already weakened as all hell. And I can just finish this thing off with another acrobatics. And that's gonna be the whole game. So yeah, that was actually a really, really good game. Like I honestly, if I made one misplay here around these 50-50s, I could have easily lost this battle. So this guy, yeah, this um, coconuts guy really is um something of a a force to be reckoned with. In fact, I think he was the one that beat um 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 I forgot his name, but um what was his name? Harris, there we go. I don't know if you guys even know who that is, but um, he's one of Jodor's moderators who's considered to be one of the finest of battlers. Conan's actually beat that guy, which is actually really, really telling. So, because he beat him, I was thinking when he comes against me, he might even beat me as well. So, But thankfully, no, we were actually thankfully able to outplay him a little bit, despite him getting the early advantage of taking out my um, Pelipper with the um, hoop unbound because honestly I was not expecting Thunderball on that thing honestly it's because I almost never see hoop unbounds in fact I don't think I ever have seen a hoop unbound so in a battle so uh, this was like the first time so that's kind of what made this battle a little bit interesting so yeah a uh, good game to coconuts nonetheless and uh, so because we won this battle as well we are gonna be able to move on to what is probably the finals so yeah, because I think this battle was like the semifinals, so I think now we're in the finals, basically. And um, yeah, so that's basically going to be it. So until then, uh, stay tuned until we get to that battle. But for now, I, I, I guess just take it easy, because yeah, I don't think I got anything else to say other than... Yeah, just thank you all for watching. Stay tuned for um, the finals of this um, OU tournament. And um, we'll see if I can actually maybe win a tournament for once. That would be actually pretty nice if I can actually win a tournament. But uh, yeah, with all that said, I'll catch you guys in the next battle, but for now, just take it easy.